Bonjour tout le monde, so, nous sommes le lundi 25 septembre, c'est la fin du mois, so the end of the month, and uh, this is a video about uh, histoire et civilisation. So, it is, uh, you know, National Geographic, you know Le Monde, so this is an association of two different uh, magazines. And uh, this time they are talking about la Chine. De l'humiliation à l'indépendance. It's like from humiliation to independence. Uh, so there are a lot of ads. Okay. And if you're interested uh, in this magazine, just let me know. So I'll read it in French. Need uh, to zoom in a tiny bit. Voilà. L'histoire de la Chine est une longue marche, ce long walk. Si elle est devenue aujourd'hui un géant mondial, elle revient pourtant de loin. Depuis la seconde partie du 19e siècle, so be careful because the French like to use Roman, uh, Roman numbers, 19e siècle, l'antique empire du milieu avait été en effet affaibli et humilié par les grandes nations occidentales. So basically, China comes from, you know, very far. It's a, this country has been humiliated and not really respected. Uh, it was weakened, humiliated by the big occidental nations, qui avaient obtenu des concessions sur son territoire. So don't really know what he means here, but uh, so some European or American nations uh, may have had some parts of uh, some, you know, some zones uh, in China. I mean, we can think of Taiwan. Uh, we can think of uh, Hong Kong. Okay. C'est dans ce contexte troublé qu'éclate en 1912. My cat is trying to play with something. En 1912, une première révolution. So the first revolution, 1912. L'empire King ne s'en rele relèvera pas releva pas, ne s'en releva pas. S'en relever, it's like to get up. <clears throat> so, after the first revolution, 1912, China is not getting up. Okay, so it means uh, that is affecting the economy, it's affecting uh, many, uh, many aspects of the, the country. So, la jeune république de Chine connaît alors un éphémère âge d'or suivi de plusieurs décennies de chaos et we don't say chaos in French, we say chaos, so we don't prenons de S, et d'horreur, où s'entremêlent invasion japonaise et guerre civile, so kind of a mess, wars, you know, instability, and une période confuse et compliquée au cours de laquelle sévissent parmi les seigneurs de la guerre. So les seigneurs, like the seigneurs, if you want, It's not a word that can really be understood by many people. Senior is like a lord. Yeah, the, the warlord. Okay. Now, le Parti National, appelé Guomindang ou GMD, dirigé par Sun Yat-sen et Chiang Kai-shek, affronte le Parti Communiste PCC ultra minoritaire au départ, dans une lutte impitoyable qui se conclut en 1949 par la prise de pouvoir de Mao Zedong et l'avènement de la République populaire. Les nationalistes ont commis... Let me just move this stuff. Maybe I can move that up. Voilà. So, les nationalistes ont commis de graves erreurs comme d'avoir négligé le monde paysan. So, it's like the farming world. Uh, They have a lot of uh, farms over there, so cannot really neglect this aspect. De nos jours, surnage, tel un témoin visible de cette confrontation, Taïwan, Formose, où se réfugia l'infortuné Chiang Kai-shek. Cette île de la discorde reste toujours plantée comme une épine dans le pied de l'immense République populaire. An épine is like a... How do you call it again? It's like this kind of small piece of wood, you get stuck in the, in the skin, you know, and... Um, I have this word on the tip of my tongue. So, we see also une écharne, but une épine can be a thorn, but maybe more like une écharde, a splinter. 
So it's been like this. So it's painful and not really fun. And um, let me just move it like this again. So, cette île de la discorde reste toujours plantée comme une épine dans le pied de l'immense république populaire. Étrange révolution d'une époque en clair obscur qui débouche finalement sur une démocratie naufragée. So, it's a, it is a very interesting uh, country, very, very strong, but uh, still, you know, uh, on the democratic level, uh, it can be a bit scary. You know, you have the facial recognition, you have, uh, you know, if you're not a good boy or a good girl, uh, your credit uh, can be... Uh, you know, affected, you, know, you can be humiliated uh, uh, in your neighborhood, you may not be. I mean, this is what I heard from a, a Canadian psychologist saying, like, you, you, if you are not a good citizen, you may not be able to take your train, you may not be able to have access to a good credit, you may not be able to take the bus, you may not be able to have access to different things, and you'll be just limited in your 15 miles, uh, uh, you know, area. So I don't know if it's true. But we hear, we hear, we hear a lot of things, and now it's kind of uh, hard to, 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 you know, to distinguish the truth from the, you know, fake news. So anyway, uh, I'm not here to talk about that. I just want to show you the, the article about La Chine. And keep in mind, in French, when we talk about countries, we like to add an article. So it can be le or la or les, okay? Uh, if I want to say, I like China, j'aime la Chine. So usually a country ending with an E is feminine and the rest is masculine or plural. So what's going on? If I say les États-Unis, the United States, le Canada, so Canada ends with an A, and um, it's a masculine country. Les États-Unis, it's plural. Now, if I, so depending on the verb you use, if I say, for instance, I'm going to the United States, je vais aux États-Unis. Remember, that's the formula I give to my students when they take a class with me. That's one of the first formulas I give them. It's like at the equals to the equals made with or made of. So you have four prepositions. So the first one is O, which is a contraction of à le. So it's masculine, singular. À la, not contracted. À l'apostrophe, it's for the nouns uh, starting with an H or a vowel, but it's not plural. And O, A, U, X. It's for the plural form, it's a contraction of aller. Now, so be careful of that, because if I say I'm going to the United States, je vais aux États-Unis, I'm going to France, je vais uh, en France. So you have different prepositions here. Anyway, if you need to know more about that, let me know. Uh, so, yeah, this magazine is really nice because it really talk about history. That's um, different references, uh, different... They're trying to really clean up all the different uh, myth, uh, historical myth, etc. So, yeah, like for instance, they are talking about where they're wearing makeup. Uh, uh, like for instance, here, maquillé ou grimé. Uh, au XVIIe siècle, des voyageurs anglais furent très surpris par le maquillage des Espagnols. So they, they are like travelers, British travelers, who are really surprised to see uh, Spanish wearing a lot of makeup. So, and d'après Lady Anne Fanshaw, les femmes de tous les âges s'enduisaient le, la face de blanc et de rouge, de la reine à la femme du cornuel. So every woman, uh, every woman uh, was wearing makeup basically, and they were wearing this kind of white stuff with some, you know, red-ish stuff. Et aux yeux de Richard Wynne. Toutes les femmes portaient du maquillage et semblaient davantage porter un masque que leur propre visage. So, this guy, uh, Richard, said that every woman uh, had makeup on, but they were like m mostly wearing uh, this kind of a mask instead of their real face. Yeah. And uh, il vit un jour, that's a, that's a very complex thing. Uh, il vit un jour entrer dans un théâtre la reine Elisabeth de France, épouse de Philippe IV, et ses dames de compagnie, et les trouva plus grimées que des femmes gâtées par la vie, alors que certaines d'entre elles n'avaient pas même 13 ans. So, 
uh, he saw one day entering in a theater the Queen Elizabeth of France, so it's not just Spanish, so the spouse of Philippe IV, and uh, Dame de Compagnie is like ladies of company, so a queen was never alone. And he found them more, so I don't even know how to translate that, uh, grimé. Let me see here. I don't Maybe it's the same, like green, but grimé. Let me just remove this. Grimé. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, grimé. Maybe well, to make somebody up as a clown, to be made up to look old. Ah, that would be the one. Uh, so, to look like, basically. So... They were more looking like, I mean, Grimé would, could, I mean, what I understand here is more like, they, you know, if they were wearing a lot of makeup and all these different accessories, probably they were looking older than their age. They were looking a tiny bit miserable, not really happy. Uh, so that's what it means. Um, instead of being women, um, gâté is like a bit spoiled by life, you know, or you have, how can I say that? It's more like you have all, you know, you have natural beauty, you know? Uh, and even among them, some of them had barely, uh, were barely 13, so uh, it's kind of sad. And let's not forget all the different uh, uh, heavy metals you could find in the makeup, still nowadays, so just keep that in mind. Yeah, anyway. Cyrus Le Grand. So you see, yeah, they really talk about different things. I think it's really nice. Voilà. So let's get to China. I mean, virtually. Voilà. La longue marche vers l'indépendance is like the long walk towards independence. Vers towards the independence. <sighs> Complex nation that went through so many, so many traumas on the social psychology. Oof. I don't even know where to start. Uh, I think this nation has been violated. Their freedom has been violated in so many different ways. And you still find a lot of, uh, you know, uh, poor Chinese and also very rich Chinese, but that doesn't necessarily represent the majority of the country. I saw a video the other day about a woman. She was receiving. A, she was filling the tank of a of a car. It was it somewhere in China, and uh, the guy has like a Mercedes, and, you know, it's a very fancy car. And the woman doesn't make a lot of money, so he threw the money at her like this, and she started crying, picking up the money on the floor. So it's not because you're poor that you have no value. And that is something that's getting uh, more and more on my nerves. Um, and it's important to be able to pay your bills, but at the same time, uh, it's nice to be fair to other people, even though they're all, you know, poorer than you. Anyway, so very complex story. If you're interested to check, I mean, they give you a timeline here. Une nation morcelée. Uh, 12 février 1912. Many of my students don't like numbers in French. Abdication de l'empereur Pouilly et fin de l'empire des Qing. 20 janvier 1924, Sun Watsen ouvre à Canton le premier congrès du Guomindang, réorganisé. 30 mai 1925, début d'un mouvement anti-impérialiste dans toutes les villes ch euh, chinoises. 10 octobre 1928, la Chine est réunifiée sous l'égide de Chiang Kai-shek. Chiang Kai-shek. Uh, 7 juillet 1937, incident dit du pont Marco Polo, près de Pékin, qui provoque le début de la guerre sino-japonaise. Pretty bad one. Et 15 août 1945, capitulation du Japon. So, you see a lot of T-I-O-N words in, uh, in French sont pretty similar in, uh, in English. So, just keep that in mind. Uh, 10 janvier 1949, Bataille de Wang Hai, c'est Huai Hai, I don't know how to pronounce that, Huai Hai, 
débâcle des armées de Chiang Kai-shek face aux communistes. Euh, 1er octobre 1949, Mao Zedong, Mao Zedong proclame la République populaire de Chine. Yep. And it's always the same, you know, when you want to be a good boy in this kind of a strict society, um, you always have what we call in French collaborateur. So the people who are like working for the government, trying to make the country a better country. And it just reminds me a tiny bit of, uh, you know, the Nazi and people who were not German looking like, you know, blonde with blue eyes, but they were like, I'm ready to serve them. Because they are right. I believe in what they say. You know, it's uh, sometimes it, you know, all this neo-dictature, strict society, it's, it's all about pleasing the government and at the same time, uh, you lose your freedom. You know, creativity, freedom. It's really sad. Anyway, you look at the street. Uh, yeah. Uh, splendeur, splendor, I guess, misère, misery, misère. So, photographie prise à Kunming dans le Yunnan vers 1925. Si la population des grandes villes joue un rôle décisif dans la révolution, la Chine est alors majoritairement un pays rural. That is what a lot of people didn't know. Uh, if the population of the big cities play a, a decisive role, in the revolution, China is, you know, mainly, mostly uh, a rural country, meaning not big cities with gold everywhere. It's more like dirt and fields and farmers, which is important. Okay, so I'm not going to read everything, but you have l'armée rouge, the red army, uh, Mao Zedong, the long walk, la longue marche. La terreur blanche, I don't like that. So, le 12 avril 1927, à Shanghai, Chiang Kai-shek organise une répression sanglante. Bloody, sanglante, sang. Sang is S-A-N-G is blood, sanglante, bloody. Contre des ouvriers communistes en grève. Le massacre marque le début de la guerre civile avec le PCC. Parti communiste chinois. Okay, if you hear some sound, it's because my dog is playing with her toys, so I'm not gonna stop her. Oh, oh my God, this, I had, I used to have Chinese uh, students. I teach, um, I teach English. And um, when I was teaching English, because now I cannot teach everything. So anyway, l'offensive japonaise, a lot of my Chinese students were talking about that. And every time I was asking this question, do you like the Japanese? And I remember this little girl, like eight, let's say nine years old. She was like, do you know what they did to us? And I was like, well, I know somehow, somehow, but that was a long time ago. I mean, do you live in the past or do you like the culture now? You know, I mean, you cannot... Uh, you cannot uh, hate uh, the country, uh, the generations, the current generations, because of things that happen. It's like the Nazi, huh? you know, it's like Germans cannot say, I hate all the Germans because they're all a bunch of Nazi. So the new generations are different. Yeah. So, le drapeau impérial au fusil. So that's a Japanese flag. Uh, un soldat japonais monte à l'assaut dans le nord de la Chine en 1938. La Seconde Guerre Sino-Japonaise a député le 7 juillet 1937. So, yep. yeah. so anyway, l'Empire se meurt, se meurt. It is a fancy way of saying uh, it's dying. And... Oh, mon Dieu, c'est Zerfit. So, en forêt de ces dames d'honneur, c'est une faudrait. C'est l'impératrice euh, Sishi, I guess. Um, voilà. Mais on peut. We, we can also think of the Russian Revolution, hein? beginning of the 20th century, I mean 1918, that was a, the Russian uh, Revolution, and 
pretty bad stuff. So communism was just popping up um, everywhere and uh, trying to find this cap. It is funny to see that the people are trying to take over in order to find this kind of equality and um, people working for the government in a sense, that, uh, but we remove all the privilege and privileges and it's still going on in the earlier century. So I mean, in France is still, you still have a France of privilege. If you, if you meet some old families, you can, you can tell that um, they have access to certain schools and it's not just about the work, it's especially the network. So, well, no. so it's a pretty big, um, a pretty big uh, thing, huh? you know, it's, it's not just one small article. And uh, that's Taiwan, uh, Formose. Taiwan devient le dernier bastion des nationalistes. So, they explain everything. It is chassé. Chassé is like not chased, but is more like kicked out of China. Caricature figurant la République populaire de Chine en train de chasser Chiang Kai-shek et ses partisans à Taiwan en 1949. So anyway, very big. So again, if you're interested in this magazine, let me know. That way, I will tell, that will tell me who's watching this video, who is interested. I know among you uh, are like beginners, but look, I'm, I'm going to show you something. So if I, if I want, let's say, without an image, let's say I want to translate one page. If you have an iPhone, I don't have the latest iPhone. I'm not going to buy a, a new iPhone every year. I cannot afford that. I have other priorities. On the iPhone, you have the application called Translate. I think it's here, here. And uh, so you click on it and you're going to click on uh, camera. So you have a camera here. OK, this uh, like and uh, you're going to take a look. I mean, you're going to take, let's say I'm going to just take a picture. And I want to, so this is in French and I want it in, uh, let's see, in English. So you, you select and I need to put it in French for them to recognize. Okay. But well, now it's not translating at all, but usually translate well and you can translate in, um, in different uh, different languages, maybe I need to restart it. So, but it works well. So, you may have, I mean, it's still in French, but you're gonna have this stuff translated. I do it with uh, different different books, especially um, uh, you know technical textbooks um, in uh, in Spanish or other languages. But it's it's one way if you want to really translate and you don't have the Levant, they are like applications you can find uh, on uh, the iPhone. I don't know about Android. Don't ask me because I tried many times to use, use Android and I don't really like it too much. And you have, of course, uh, something about the Egyptians. And uh, it's not, it's not like this kind of obscure kind of a magazine. It's kind of a mainstream. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's why I talk a lot about history, because I like to read about that. Anyways, you guys have a nice day. I'm going to make a video about uh, two other videos, one about philosophy and one about uh, French literature. Uh, again, uh, I'm making these videos. I, I had a lot of new subscribers lately, so thank you so much for that. And uh, well, now YouTube is asking me to have, I don't remember, like 3000 views or whatever. And uh, it's a slow process. I'm getting there. Maybe I can retire with uh, YouTube, my YouTube channel. I don't know. Um, let's see. But it's not. It is, it is cool. So thank you for that. And um, if you have any suggestion, like you would like to have a video about a certain topic, uh, French, huh, related to French or the, the France, 
uh, let me know. I can try to, to find the, the time for that. And, uh, and voilà. Passez une bonne journée et à bientôt. Au revoir.